That's the fantastic operator. Please, what was that one called? That's Get What You Want, and their debut album, mm. Yes, Yes, Vindictive, is out March 17th. I'm a big fan of them. As uh, some listeners might know, they're all under five, which is amazing when well, they, you think about it. That is amazing. Have a little think about it. Bet, you know, they've only been speaking for two or maybe three mm. years, tops, mm. and then they form a band. And mm. then they, uh, you know, they go through so many different phases. Kids these days, you know, uh, kids are doing sort of older type things, younger and younger, as, uh, human civilization evolves. Soon there, there will be bands of five-year-olds. So what are you saying, Operator Please, are not five? No. They're, how, how old's the drummer? The drummer's tiny. Right? His voice hasn't broken yet. Physically basically. tiny. Yeah, because he's a child, not because right. there's anything wrong with him. But he's basically a child. Oh, uh, a question for one of the six music listeners would be, yeah. what, would, what, what was the youngest charting band ever? <laughs> I'd be interested to know that. And if any of the listeners could, um, tell us that, then, um, I'd be pleased. Well, there's something to look forward to. The youngest charting band ever. What, what would you guess that would be? Oh, uh, well, what about the St. Winifred's School Choir? I knew you'd say that. It doesn't count. It's a choir. It's a manufactured thing. I mean, obviously, they're all manufactured. manufactured. They were manufactured by a church and, and a love of God. No, I want I want a band that's, um, like, more of a traditional band. A proper band. I don't want a St. Winifred School Choir. Who are the other big school choirs? Well, in choir? terms of charting, well, what about Alid Jones? Is he a band? He's a one-man band. He's an artist. Mm. I want more of a band like Hanson, you know what I mean? Ha what about Hanson? Mm, well, yeah, but... They were pretty young. They were pretty Zach young. The drummer was... Is Zach the drummer or the lead singer? No. I can't remember. He was the good-looking one. That's all I remember. Who was the sort of slightly chubby drummer? Munty. Munty, that's right. Munty Pipkins. Uh, he was very young. Yeah. Hey, this is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Happy Saturday morning. Um, it's the weekend, a time when there's no law, no rules. Um, go out, spend money, have fun, get drunk, fall over. Do what you want. Yeah. Yeah, anarchy. And I think maybe I felt the beginnings of, uh, summertime stroke spring in the air. Did you? Today. It was nice and mild. Mm. Didn't you think that? Yeah. When you went out of the house? Yeah. You don't care at all I'm about the weather, I'm not as weather obsessed as you are. I no. love thinking about weather. I love the weather. I love the weather. I'm uh, confused because I bought a pastry but when I came into the studio from the shop across the road. I was thinking, I know, I have a pastry Saturday morning. I like pastry. I bought one. And now I've lost it! I put it down, I can't remember where. It might be in the shop still. Shall I go to the shop to find out? No. I will, I can't live without the pastry. Hey, uh, here's some Della Soul with I Know. Della Soul, uh, there, here on the Adam and Joe Show on BBC Radio 6 Music. They're a hip-hop band from America, and they were one of the first bands. This is for younger listeners, mm. uh, to, to kind of use samples that creatively, weren't they? Yeah, certainly. Unexpected samples, you mm. know what I mean? From not necessarily, uh, black sources, you know. They were one of the first black groups to sample a white band, as far as I know. Uh, that's a Steely Dan sample, isn't it, there? Yeah, yeah, from yeah. Peg. Mm. Although, having said that, Grandmaster Flash was sampling... Yeah, I think you're, you're probably... I'm talking you're probably a load of old wrong there. Balls, I might I? say it's dangerous to be so racially segregative. It's very racist, isn't it? In your analysis. It's not racist, it's just unnecessarily, I think uh, it's probably, divisive. I think it's probably racist. I think you're I'm probably gonna racist. Get fired. Oh, no. Yeah, because I'm You're thinking, very racist. I'm very racist, aren't mm. I? Yeah, I'm probably I'm one of the most... how racist you are. really very racist. It's a shame, really. You know what? I smell very racist as well. That's a racist thing to say. It is racist. Uh, who was the guy that did, um, uh, Planet Rock? Uh, Rock, Rock, Planet Rock. Don't remember. He was that because that samples craft work, of course, and that was mm. very much before De La Soul. But anyway, there you go. Lovely De La Soul. Now you've got a track coming up uh, now yeah. that you've chosen for the listeners, haven't you? This is kind of a Radio Two track, uh, but it's it's really nice. It's kind of an old one. And uh, the story behind this is when I was a, a, a kid, I suddenly decided I went to see Oliver mm -hmm. in the West End. At the Albury Theatre, maybe the Aldwych, can't remember. It's a very spectacular production. Wow. And I saw all those kids about my age, dressed as little urchins, yeah. jumping around with everyone looking at them and applauding them. And I thought, I want to be like that. I want to be an urchin. I want to be an urchin and jump around on stage and have people applaud me. How old were you again? Uh, 23? Yeah. No, 
uh, probably about nine or ten. Okay. Maybe eleven. Right. Uh, so I got my mum to take me to audition for that very production. No. I think she might have seen that they had, uh, you know, openings for urchins coming up. I didn't have any acting training. <laughs> Urchin openings. Yeah, but Ooh. I decided I wanted to be an actor. Yeah. Uh, so I went to audition for it, and the song I learned is from Oliver, uh, was, was Where Is Love. Yeah. Do you remember that one? No. Little Mark Lester in some kind of a basement staring oh, through the bars. It's so high pitched. It's so high pitched. So yeah. <laughs> that I think they actually get a lady to, to dub it over in the in in the film musical. You've never told me this before. Um, that's true. So you're a little Thespy Pop Idol kid. So I practiced and practiced and practiced that song and I had fantasies about <laughs> about getting the part <laughs> and you know i told my mum all about my fa yes mummy when i get the part <laughs> my favorite thing will be this the bit when i'm in the undertakers and i toss all the coffins over and run around that bit's going to be really good <laughs> <laughs> my mum went yes yes it is <laughs> anyway i went along i was so nervous <laughs> yeah i was popping my pants uh and i went on stage and i sung i don't know i have no memory of it but i'm sure it was the worst possible version of where is love ever sung by a human being well because all i got was a thank you thanks very next. much never never heard from no me. we've got a tall urchin thank you bye <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we're trying to get urchins under six foot <laughs> they gotta be smaller than fagin <laughs> anyway so when i heard this version of that song by an an old time karuna lady irene crowell uh this is a kind of a jazzed up version of it it's sort of exorcised various problems yeah, did it exorcise him or did it make you curl up into a ball in the corner? No, because she sings it. This she sings this so beautifully. Yeah, and I wanted to put it early in the show because it's a very soothing song. Mm. It's kind of got a bit of the radio too yeah. about it. Uh, if you're still in bed, this will be really uh, you know cuddlesome and warming. Uh, this is Irene Kral. Is it Kral? I don't know. She sounds like a, a monster from Doctor Who. Yeah, uh, with where is love? This is Kral. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, she's going on. She's got more. Mm. Hasn't she found it? It's just, Kral. it's just in the uh, lavvy by the books there. You just <laughs> left it there. That song was sung by Kral. <laughs> Who was Kral in the film? Kral. He was the big skull man, wasn't he? Was he? Mm. With the glaive. What? Was it called the glaive? The weapon <laughs> he had in Kral? The glaive. I think maybe. it was called the glaive. It was sort of a spiky boomerang type thing. Mm, there was Krull. I was more of a Hawk the Slayer fan. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Krull's much better than Hawk the Slayer. It is. That's the, well, that would be the most pathetic argument. <laughs> the most obsolete argument in the history of arguments. Let's have it later on. This Adam and Joe on Six Music. Uh, it's the point of Six Music is uh, it's an eclectic mix of music. And, and that was the eclectic. You don't have to justify today. your selections, man. You know, you've got a lot. Not to you, but I bet there's some gr grumbly Merwins You've out got there a bit of a, a grumble. You know, you're half Michael Ball. Grumbly Merwin. <laughs> I find that insulting. I've got an enlarged ball. <laughs> <laughs> One of my Michael Balls is, is, is swollen. You are more than half what? ball. <laughs> let's have some proper music, or let's have a trail yeah. just to make it clear where we are and who we are. What is she singing there? I could have sworn she's sung, I've got. I've got Hitler's baby. She, I've got lady fingers. Yeah, I've got Hitler's baby. That's Luscious Jackson with it's lady disgrace. fingers. Grace. What was the film uh, with all the uh, Hitler had all the kids? Go oh, on, the boys push. from Brazil. Yeah. So it's a reality. Yeah. He has been cloned. That much we know. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, that's horrible. Horrible thought. Horrible Why is she so thought. excited about having like the lady fingers though? They're sort of what are they wafers, fingers? aren't they? That you pop on trifles. Are they? I thought they were a sort of sea urchin. Huh? Maybe they are too. Lady like fingers. an anemone. Yeah, they tickle you when you go skydiving. Skydiving? Sea diving. <laughs> That's Luscious Jackson anyway there. That was from 1999. Those were the year. Yeah, that was nine years ago, Numbers fans. No, is it more longer? Yeah, than well done. Eight plus one. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> uh, now, this is Adam and Joe here on Six Music. We've got to resolve um song wars from last week it's which... not looking good for me you not no i'm gonna lose well they were all upset about the fact that your foreign song they reckon sounded too in debt to the it's concords too, ob too obvious uh, mine was just was too good. obvious i thought it was good uh but we're gonna find out definitively who's won and we'll play the winning it didn't song sound like you meant that 
Well, l- listen, <laughs> I thought that was fairly magnanimous I after all the fun. Song Wars history that we've had. That's true. You're being very generous. Um, we're going to resolve Song Wars in the, in the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes after the news. But um, before that, here's some more great music for you. This is uh, Al Green with L-O-V-E Love. That's Al Green. He's a reverend, man. And uh, he loves to sing the soul songs, and that was L-O-V-E, Love. There's a two-hour documentary about him floating around Tellyland, yeah, mm. on cable. There's a weird channel called Main Street. <laughs> you love Main Street. have got a satellite dish. I do. It has good uh, musical documentaries on it. It's like Sky Arts, isn't it? The... So, it's a bit like that. And it's, But it, I think it actually is, and it turns into Main oh, Street. Oh, really? Well, every now and then it has got wicked documentaries Not on sure it. Not sure about and that. I'd never seen a proper one on Al Green before. Yeah. He looked quite old. Uh, but he was... T- and wow, he's amazing to listen to. Mm-hmm. He's got a very, very colourful manner and gesticulates brilliantly. Right. And, uh, you know, he's a preacher, so he knows how to speak. Mm-hmm. He knows how to, t- to how to spin a yarn. That's right. Well, he's had a colourful life, though, for goodness sake. Yeah. What's, what's he done? Thrown, pa- you know, pans of boiling fat at ladies? And Has stuff. he? Something awful oh, like that. Oh, dear, oh, dear. That was, I'm focusing on the darkest hour. Mm. Because obviously he's done many wonderful things as well. Of course, including uh, done doing that song. So did just he write, reporting the facts. What did he write that song? Then I wonder. Like did but he write you and I have got stop to stop sort of um, <clears throat> you know, highlighting our ignorance. And well, we're, we're just asking, asking each other questions. questions we don't know. Yeah, but our listeners can tell us though. That's can't true. They? Did he write that? That's song? what listeners are for. <laughs> or did Edwin Collins write that? <laughs> Edwin Collins wrote it. And yeah, went back in time. <laughs> Orange Juice did. By the way, I was talking earlier on about who wrote Planet Rock. That was Africa Bambata who done Bomb. that. Bomb Bambata. Who done that song? Have you got an Africa Bambata album? Bambata. Yeah, Bambata. 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 <laughs> Bambata. <laughs> That's like an ancient gay village. Bottibata. Um, ha- have you got any albums by Bambata? <laughs> <laughs> have you? Oh dear. Uh, no, I don't think so, no. <laughs> uh, no. I know what you're thinking. What? They're all bad things. Just imagining a sort of medieval <laughs> village. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Trading um, day. Okay, now, before it's too late, it's time for the news. Christmas crackers. That's like walking from different floors of a uh, big record shop isn't it you know what i mean like uh, i know what you mean going up the stairs mm. and you're getting a little bit of the uh, classical department that the music they're playing is bleeding out and then the r&b department the you can hear yeah, what they're playing or and... like wandering around the corridors of a music college yeah or c- some kind of school where they've got music day and then meanwhile uh, the doors are someone's open. thrown a hand grenade in the drum department mm. and that's gone off that's a particular bracket of music, isn't it? I put it in the same. I like to pigeonhole bands. I don't think you're quite and right. And you know to what? Do bands something. love to be pigeonholed. Yeah, who doesn't? Categorized, and I put that in the same pigeonhole as um, the polyphonic <laughs> spree. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a uniquely early noughties pigeonhole. That's right. It's about to be um, sealed. Yeah, well, that was from 2004. That was the Go Team with Lady Flash. And this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Lady but- Fingers, Lady Flash. I know, it's all about the ladies. But right now... It's time for Song Wars. The War of the Songs. A couple of tunes by a couple of prongs. Which will you vote for? Which one is the best? We're putting our songs to the listener test. So check it out. You know, I did a gig this week, a uh, stand-up gig, and one of the other performers there, Dan Clark, very talented young man, he has a little routine in his act where he does, like, uh, samples that he's obviously conjured up from, from Garage Band. And <clears throat> he's used a lot of the same little Garage Band loops that we use, you know mm. what I mean? Uh, like he used that, I think that little loop there that I used for that Song Wars jingle and also our text the nation. Beep, 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 mm. beep, 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 He played that. I oh thought you God. can't do that. That's the text the nation jingle. But of course it's not. It's just a garage band. Just, loop. Yeah. What we, are you we, do we better get those, uh, these Song Wars songs up. Yeah. Somewhere to download soon, otherwise. But what do you do if you, if you've got like, I mean, all, none of those garage band loops are copyright. They're all copyright free. That's the whole point of mm. garage band, right? So once you've sung over them, is that then, does the copyright then become yours? Does it revert to you because you've created a new thing out of it? Or does the copyright of your singing revert to iTunes, yeah. to Apple's? Well, they haven't got any copyright on those loops. 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand. Anyway, last week, uh, it was Song Wars was back after a little break. And the uh, challenge was for Joe and I to write a, a foreign song, a song in foreign about um, a lady, a film, film ladies of some kind. Mm. And Joe went for, what did you do? I went for a kind of um, smorgasbord of French actresses. Uh, we've had a few emails about it. Mm -hmm. Can I read some of them out? Go on then. Uh, this is from Philip Thubemen. Superman. Uh, no, Sub Susman. Okay. I don't know. Susman, yes. Hi, guys. Greeting from the lovely city of Bamberg. Uh, this week's Song Wars. I thought it was one of the best wars ever. I liked both tracks very much, and I'm quite torn about my vote. Joe's song has such a feel-good touch to it, and I caught myself whistling along while walking around in the spring sun. Gets you in a good mood instantly. Uh, I've only, I'm only reading this out because it's really nice about That's my nice. song. That's nice, it's very upbeat. Joe's songs in general are very well produced, always very fitting to the atmosphere and just enough background instrumentation. Unlike Adam, who <laughs> tends to go a bit mad and overdo it. <laughs> that's true. Uh, I'm only reading this out because it's, uh, it's the one that's nice about my one. Yeah. Adam's song was also very funny. I love the impression of Penelope's film titles and lyrics were a bit more creative than the ones of Mr. Cornish. A bit more. That's as good as it gets for me. Right. We have other emails, like from David Clark. My vote this week goes to Adam for his depraved tale of lust and obsession. I imagine, I imagine with a huge 4-4 kick behind it, this tune would go down well at some sort of filthy cave rave for criminals in deepest, darkest Spain. Thumbarter. Yeah. Joe's was good too, but the word on the street is he's a copycat. That's unfair, I think. Uh, this one from Paul Fung. I think Adam's song is the clear winner this week. He's always trying to do something different with the allotted task, whereas Joe seems a bit complacent. Adam's work goes beyond Song Wars and could perhaps be released in a compilation or played in an art installation. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, very nice. Played in an art installation. That's <laughs> you could play you could fart play, noises yeah, play in an art installation. But uh, let's find out who in won. In an art installation. In an, exactly. That would be ideal. Right, I'm going to read this out this week. Usually oh, you exciting. get to do it. Song Wars results. Here's the piece of paper, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hope. And the winner is... Oh! Oh, wow. It's a trouncing. I've won it. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam with 93%. You know, still not the biggest trouncing in the history of Song Wars by any stretch. You've trounced me with much more than that on many occasions. But there you go. I, I can't pretend that I'm not delighted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, I listeners. I can't pretend that I'm not furious. Uh, now, you're away next weekend. Is that right, Joe? Yes. We have a guest presenter. Guest co-presenter. Uh, who I'll tell you about a little bit later on in the show. And we're also going to do a guest presenter song wars as well. That's right. Next week. Yeah. So you get like uh, about a month off song wars, you, you yeah. lazy so-and-so. Only I, I might have written a song today. Oh, really? Okay. I Done, or I might not. Okay, it might not can, be a song. Yeah, you can unveil that later on. But right now, it's time for me to play my winning Song Wars song. This is about Penelope Cruz, and it's all in Spanish, and it's it's slightly demented. But I won! I can smell this person's soul, and I want to get to know him, you know? Ooh, Penelope Cruz, me gusta si estaba en vanilla sky, y gotica y blue, y volver que no he visto. Y otros no he visto, se parecen embotados, pero ella es bonita. Yo soy Penelope Cruz, hola, yo tengo pelo negro y ojos hermosos, perro veneno. Yo tengo esta ría alegre, conducir un alegro y después haga una mierda gigante. Uh, Penelope Cruz, me llamo sin mis largas pestañas, fueron hechos para ti. Oh, perdóneme, es mi estómago ácido. Ay, caramba, era un almuerzo largo. Oh, estómago ácido. Sin mis largas pestañas fueron hechos para ti. Un veneno Cruz me llamo si estaba en Sahara y en Corel y Smadolin con Nick Cage. There you go, that's wow. my Penelope Cruz song. 
Thank you very much, listeners, for voting that. The winner of Song Wars this week. That's only my fifth win in the history of Song Wars, so I'm quite delighted about that. And uh, as I said, we'll tell you more about what's happening for Song Wars next week, later on in the programme. But right now, here's some more uh, real music. This is from MGMT. I think that's pronounced Management. Mm. And they're a kind of new, crazy... Uh, it's Hail and Paste. Band. It's Hail and Paste. It's the Management. Paste. Paste. And this is called Time to Pretend. MGMT. Apparently it is MGMT rather than management or the management. Uh, and they're from America. And that's called Time to Pretend. That was good, wasn't it? I haven't heard yes. that before. Yes, it was nice. I enjoyed that. They're playing at the uh, South by Southwest um, BBC. No, it's not a BBC festival, is it? It's a six music night at South by Southwest. Exactly. It's narrated by Steve Lamack. And they're playing alongside I Was a Cub Scout, The Pan I Am, Florence and the Machine and <laughs> Wildlife. That's all your favourite bands. I love Florence and the Machine. Uh, why can't we go to South by Southwest? I want to go to Austin, Texas. Come on. Is that where it is? That's Austin, Austin Texas. Yeah, it's the grooviest place in the whole of America. I've been there. I know you've been there. I want to go over there as well. Can we go? Next year. Next year. Next year. <laughs> exactly. I agree with Joe. <laughs> Horse noise. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> Um, okay, now, have you got anything there, Joe, that you wanted to you want, tell the listeners? Um, uh, yeah, I'd like the listeners to watch out for a film poster this week. Yeah. It's all over the, uh, the bus stops. I think it's the worst film poster of the year. Oh, I know exactly which one it is. Which one is it? Uh, Accidental Husband. Yes. Yeah, I was thinking that myself yesterday. Really? I made some notes. It's a disgrace. It's on the way to the tube. I can't believe it. And I, I can only think of three reasons why it's the worst film poster in the world, but they're powerful reasons. Yeah. The first is obvious. It's identical to Bridget Jones's diary. That's right. They've thought the meeting was, uh, went a bit like this. Bridget Jones's diary <laughs> was a hit. Yes. Make this one the same. Yes. That was the end of the meeting. Exactly. Who, Colin Farrell is in the film, and he was in the other film, too. <laughs> we could put him in the same position on the poster. It's exactly the same, only in place of uh, Helen Tights. What was she called? Bridget Jones, lady? Uh, Janine... Janine Strickmore. Yeah. Uh, holding a diary. What's she called, that Renee actress? Zellweger. Yeah, there you go, Renee Zellweger. Greta Stilts. <laughs> in place of her, they've got Uma... In place of a diary, there's a bouquet of flowers. Yeah. Uh, in place of a uh, huge grunt is Colin Firth. And in place of Colin Firth is <laughs> some man called Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Who's Jeffrey Dean Morgan? <laughs> the Who Mor in the British Isles is going to get excited about seeing Jeffrey Dean Morgan? The Morganator. <laughs> the Morganator? <laughs> He's just a man. <laughs> Nothing distinguishing about him at all. And the other thing is, uh, which maybe you've got on your yeah, list there. I want to say it. Uh, go on, you say it then. Colin Firth's photo exactly. is of a much lower resolution That's than right. everybody else's. You get this quite a lot uh, in the modern age, where it's so easy just to grab photographs off the internet and drag them into your magazine spread, mm -hmm. but not usually into your major feature <laughs> film poster. <laughs> and then you pull them and you overstretch them, and, and you know, the structure of the, the photo becomes pixelated and... Firth is basically just grabbed from another film, splodged in and stretched. He, he even looks as if he's grabbed from the Bridget Jones poster. Does he? He's, <laughs> out, he's completely soft and out of focus. Yeah. Whereas Jeffrey Dean Morgan, you can see every hair on his boring chin. Well, presumably they phoned up Firth and said, uh, <laughs> Colin, is there any way you could do, we could take some pictures? We're making a poster for the film. And Colin just said, no. No, too I'm, busy. I'm too busy. I'm watching television this afternoon. <laughs> I can't come. So, don't worry. It's okay, Colin. We're, we found a picture of you on another poster we'll just drag it from there it's fine no one will notice and you know the idea of uh, that being a satisfying poster anyway is kind of um, depressing all film posters are these days are just a white background the lead actor and maybe one prop yeah and that's it you know anything else is considered to be confusing and if you think back at the good old days when uh, you know those amazing artists would do uh, amazing kind of imagined um, collages of scenes from the film. Mm. You know the Star Wars poster? Yeah. Or Indiana Jones? I mean, obviously, that's a fantasy film and stuff, and a romantic comedy is slightly different. It's always been a bit more functional in the world of romantic, romantic comedy. Romantic comedy, do you think? Yeah. Maybe you're right. But imagine if Star Wars had a similar poster design. <laughs> Darth Vader in the middle, against a white background, 
Han Solo on one side, shaking a fist at him, <laughs> Luke throwing his head back and laughing on the other. The tagline would be, you've never seen stars war quite like this. <laughs> <laughs> they oh. would have got more, uh, more, uh, a bigger audience. More money. They would have got more money. Yeah. That's where they went wrong. Anyway, keep an eye out for that poster. The act, what's it called? The accidental husband. Yeah. It's shockingly poor. That notion as well, the, the notion of a whole accidental husband. <laughs> and if you work in the media and know anyone who has anything to do with that campaign, call in. <laughs> on mo- call in, or on Monday, just slap them. No. Don't, don't give a reason. I would like Please to, slap them. I would like to speak to the people involved with that, because I bet you, I mean, because it looks like a mock-up, that, uh, right. poster, right? I bet you there was something that happened, they had to rush release the poster mm. or something, and they ran out of time and money and, uh, <laughs> enthusiasm. <laughs> That's the result. I would love to hear from anyone involved in that. Give us a call. What's the number? Can people call us up? No, they'd have to email uh, adamandjoe.6. Oh, and then we would call them. Co.uk, then, then we'd call them. Yes, That's right. Or, of course, you can text. The number is 640 You've got to be able to prove it, though. You have to prove that you're involved in yeah, the thing. Yeah, we'd cross-examine you. Exactly. Uh, ask various coded questions. Can't just be comedy conjecture. Uh, now it's time for some music that I've selected for you, listeners. This is a... Uh, this isn't even out yet, okay? This is new music. I dug this out from the, the promo bin probably stole it off someone's desk here at six music it's by peter Möhren. he's one third of the uh swedish pop stars peter bjorn and john of course they did they the, did the whistling one yeah <whistles> young folks and he's got an album coming out called the last tycoon uh which is out sometime in may early may and this is the single 21st of april this is out and i think it's quite good it's called real to real but check this out real is spelled r double e l and two is spelled T double O and then real is spelt like reality. R E so there's about nine layers of meaning. So there. there's a real exactly that is too it's real. It's too real. This real is too real. This is just too real. Oh. It's real. Check it out. That was Peter Muren with uh, real to real. It's the real was too real. And that was sort of mellow and laid back. We've got a little mellow theme going mm. on today. A fishing reel? Mm-hmm. A uh, a reel of magnetic tape. Right. A Scottish reel, a kind of a dance. Nice, a little jig there. What else could it be? Nothing, that's it. That's it. So one of those things is too real. Yeah. He likes imaginary fishing. This reel is too real. Uh, Anyway, as as I said, that was out on... That is out on uh, 21st of April in the future. Wow, I love the future. Exactly, we all love the future. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music, coming up to the top of hour. And even though it's not quite... 10 o'clock right now i think we're gonna nudge the top of our sweeper forward a little bit let's do it now that was idle wild with love steals us from loneliness is that new idle wild or old idle wild 2005. 2005 so it's vintage no it's not vintage I, I suppose you'd say but it's from a couple of years ago let's put it that way uh i found my pastry listeners you'll be pleased to hear at the top of the show oh, thank christmas for that i know everyone's a little bit worried about it you know, because oh. I bought the pastry and then I came into Six Music and suddenly no pastry. And I'm thinking, where, where's the pastry? Turned out I left it in the shop on the, on the very sweet, Freudian moment for sweetie you. Sweetie counter right in front of the till. When you lose your first pastry, it's a very important formative, formative thing for a human being. But what does that say? I'm, I'm getting senile, leaving my pastries behind. That is apparently the first sign, losing track of your pastries. Yeah. <laughs> Is the first sign of old age. What's happened to my pastry? <laughs> Has anybody the seen fact that you're my, eating pastries. my pastry? You've got flakes all over your jumper. <laughs> right. Flakes of pastry like a little old colonel. <laughs> 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 it's my Saturday treat. My pastry. <laughs> What's in your pastry? A kind of a sort of a... Custard. No, it's like a cinnamon gel. Ah, oh, cinnamon gel. Yes. Mm, do you know who manufactures that? No. Toshiba. <laughs> they, yeah. It's good. Mm. Anyway, so uh, one of our favourite actors, listeners, if you listen to our waffle regularly, you'll know that we like to follow the career of, of one of Britain's most thrusting young uh, performance talents, Nicole Kidman. Danny Dyer. Danny Dyer. Danny Dyer works with a director called Nick Love. They make such films as The Football Factory and uh, what was the one called where Sean Bean beat all the nonces up? Uh, the revenge slokes. <laughs> stop uh, it. Shut, stop it and shut up. Yeah. I forget what it was called. Uh, what was the one where they went to Spain with all the money? Um, that was the business. The boots. The business. Yeah. Yeah, the business. There you go. Uh, and they're genuinely uh, a pretty good team. 
Uh, he was also in, um, Severance. Severance, yeah. Which I saw this week. Mm, what a that, strange uh, film. Yeah, odd one. Very odd. It's got some good moments in it. Anyway, Dyer's never, uh, um, you know, minces his words, does he? He's been mouthing off this week, He has he? been mouthing off, yeah, in quite an entertaining been style. He's been mouthing, And, you know, that makes him really great value for money, yeah. uh, Danny Dyer. He doesn't sort of stand on ceremony. He's not amazingly kind of, um premeditated in the way he manages his career or public persona how old is he these days four which four. is really refreshing yeah it's, you know it's refreshing to someone who's kind of uncensored he, yeah. he must be in his 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 mid to late 20s is he i suppose maybe a bit older i don't know uh anyway it always makes the commentary tracks on the dvds of their film amazing to listen to mm. if you haven't uh, stuck in any of those films and listened to the commentary track we do recommend it uh the business is amazing football factory is breathtaking <laughs> um there's even a little you know making of a uh, bit of video on the dvd of severance a kind of danny dyer on set diary that's quite breathtaking <laughs> yeah anyway he's been mouthing off uh this week and uh, this is what it said in the london paper on thursday i quote in a completely unprovoked tirade angry danny branded orlando bloom a rubbish actor and mocked james mcavoy's foppish looks mm. you ready for this then so this is what Dyer says. Orlando Bloom, he's come straight out of drama school, gets Lord of the Rings trilogy, and goes and gets another trilogy, Pirates <laughs> of the Caribbean. He's got all sorts of dough, loads of screaming girls chasing him, but he hasn't owned his craft yet. He's a rubbish actor. I don't think anyone I've ever come across has said, you know what, he's a good actor, that Orlando Bloom. He's got a good name and quite an irritating face. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, he's only calling it like he sees it, isn't he? Kapow! Kapow! That's fair enough, I would say. Bloom, taken out. Well, you know, Bloom's got his, um... Imagine that getting two trilogies. Yeah. How jammy can you get? Double trilogies. Who else has got that? Was there anyone Nobody in the else. Lord of the Rings trilogy that was in Pirates as well? No. Don't think so. I don't know. Double trilogies. He's right, though, isn't he? He's Dyer, the jammiest actor in the world. Dyer also mouths off at James McAvoy. Do you want to hear what he's got to say about him? How can he be down on McAvoy? James McAvoy? <laughs> I let all these quotes start with the actor's name, then a question mark. <laughs> he's absolutely gone flying. BAFTA nominations presented at the Oscars. Why? Because he's running about with a floppy hairdo and he does period dramas. <laughs> I would say that that's unfair and unwarranted yeah. criticism from Dyer. Yeah. Casting agent. Hmm. We need someone with a, a floppy hairdo to play the lead in this period drama. Uh, Hugh Grant's too old. Hugh and McGregor's got spiky hair. I know. What about James McAvoy? He's got the ideal hair. <laughs> I never thought of McAvoy as being floppy haired in the way that Hugh, Hugh Grant always was. At the audition? Great read, James. Now, can we see what you can do with your hair? Flop it around as if you've just been accused of rape. Great. <laughs> now, flick it back like you've just been caught having sex in a library. Terrific, you've got the part. This is all a t this, uh, that this is imaginary. Atonement audition. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I still haven't seen that film. Mm. But Dyer, what? He's, an, he's insane. I think he's justified in going off on one about uh, Bloom. It's not something you're supposed to do, though, is it? It's very bad form if you're in the entertainment business to, but, you know, we kind of do it all the time in a pathetic way, but to badmouth other people. Yeah. Because, no. because now he can never be in a film with Orlando Bloom. Well, it's going to be very awkward. Without there being a big, a uh, big bruising fight. You know what would happen? They'd go out, they'd find that they were both very decent guys. They'd go out would for they? a drinky. They might have, do, do a little bit of shoving each other in the shoulders and then they'd bond. I don't fancy Blo I don't fancy Bloom's chances, uh, in you a fight with Dyer. Tasty. Dyer's probably tasty. Yeah, he'd take him all the way yeah, out the back door. Probably well tasty. Wouldn't be a lot of Bloom's pretty boy look after him that out. altercation. Yeah, exactly. No, I don't fancy see mcavoy's chances against dyer either dyer always looks as if he's just crawled out from quite a bad punch up <laughs> anyway do you know what i mean like he's been boozing all night he's amazing value for money but i don't know you know i if i was his management i'd, I'd advise him to um keep a bit more shtum because it might limit his uh casting he'll find options out. when he's older and wiser he'll look back and he'll say oh i used to have off a lot in the old days back in the day but i don't do That's that true. no more you know when he's the new generation's answer to ray winston when he's when he's in his own trilogy yeah oh that's what he needs that's what everyone dreams of i dream of a trilogy the lamp trilogy the lamp <laughs> the boot <laughs> <laughs> boot two double boots uh right now it's time for rem listeners and what are we doing are we giving away tickets to R an rem gig uh, yeah, you can head to bbc.co.uk forward slash six music to find out how you can get your hands on tickets to see, uh, R.E.M. play live at the ICA. 
Hey, yeah. that'd be good. A nice good venue. intimate gig. Yeah. We love the ICA. That'd be fantastic. This is Supernatural Super Serious. R.E.M. with Supernatural Super Serious. That's out on March the 24th. That's going to be the first single to be taken from their new album, Accelerate, out at the end of uh, this month. And uh, you can head to bbc.co.uk forward slash six music to find out how you can get your hands on tickets to see them play at the ICA. That's a great venue because it's small. Exactly. It's intimate. And it's always amazing seeing, a, you know, a really big band in an intimate uh, venue, in it. Tall people, you mean? Like a band made out of big people. What did I say? A big band. A big band, yeah. Because they are fairly big, aren't they? Peter Bucky's a big hulking man. Uh, Stipey, he's uh, sort of tall and thin, isn't he? Or is he a little titchy man? You never know, do you, with pop stars? You just never know. I used to love Adam Ant. And, there should uh, really be a button on, um, <coughs> you know, a TV remote control that could give you the height of anyone on the telly. Right, exactly. Because it's always very hard to tell, and it can sometimes be shocking when you see them in real life. Um, well, you and I are, uh, people are always shocked how, uh, what a disparity there yeah. is uh, height wise. I saw, um, Harry Potter with my own eyes the other day. Yes. Couldn't believe it. Teeny weeny. I was standing right next to him and it was like he was a mile away. Is he a little titch box? Tiny. Wow. But of course, in, uh, the world of film acting, that saves a lot of money because they build the sets much smaller. <laughs> That's true. You yeah. know what? I saw, uh, Ron Weasley the other day. Did you? Yes, oh. I did. He, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> is that the name dropping that's the name drop nice sound. one <laughs> yeah what's the name of the actor ron weasley uh reg howard <laughs> reg howard yeah um anyway i saw him and he was surrounded he had an entourage man because he was looking nonchalant yeah because that guy's life must be hell he's cool he's the new malcolm mcdowell yeah he's yeah. the new malcolm mclaren um, <laughs> but don't you reckon he, he must have a hard time wherever he goes. Oh, he has a wicked time. And I saw him in a kind of grown up drinking club. His life's like a trailer for skins. Exactly. Well, it looked, I mean, he, it looked as if he had the cast of skins surrounding him, like a little entourage there guarding him in case really? anyone came up and started, uh, ruffling his feathers. Quick, someone text in that actor's name. We can't remember what his name is. Who we'll plays Ron Weasley. We're very bad and at Harry facts. Potter. It's what, early in the morning. What was the other fact that someone texted us in recently? They said that we were okay, uh, MCPS-wise, as far as the rights for our Song Wars songs went. They reverted to us. Hang on, you're going off on a tangent. I'm, stick I'm, stick I'm to Weasley. Of, stick to Weasley. He looked, uh, very moody and... Did uh, he? he? He looked as if you shouldn't approach him. Otherwise, yeah. he would do magic. On, really? Yeah. He'd give you a bit of his Thunderpants. <laughs> was he in Thunderpants? Of course he was. He was the lead in Thunderpants. Thunderpants. Wasn't he? That's right. Thunderpants, of course. Uh, sorry to go off on another tangent. <laughs> being one of those movies that just recycles the theme tune from another film. Is that true? In the case of Thunderpants, it was the theme from Ants. Really? And they just hijacked it. I don't know if they hijacked it for the actual film, but it was all over the over trails. Over the trailer. Do, 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 And they just used it on Thunderpants. Uh, listen, listeners, coming up in a second, it's Text the Nation time. The actor's name is, of course, Rupert Grint. No, no, is no, that his real name? No one can remember the word Grint on a Saturday that's before his noon. Real name. I think one of our listeners just texted in a made-up name there. Here's a free play. Uh, <laughs> this is a. Are they were they German trio? Yeah, yeah. This is a classic. This is trio with da da da. Toots and the Maytals with pressure drop. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Before we get into uh, text the nation, uh, we've got uh, an email. For, uh, uh, for Danny Dyer. Yeah, actually, it's a text. Uh, it's an anonymous text. Made us laugh. It says, Hi, Adam and Joe. If you see Danny Dyer, can you tell him I've got a couple of trilogies barely used in the back of the motor if he wants them? Lovely trilogies. Oh, imagine getting your hands on a lovely <laughs> trilogy. <laughs> and we were thinking as Enough well that trilogy. Uh, uh, some people texted or emailed us to say that, of course, other people who have appeared in double trilogies, Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford in, in uh, the Star Wars trilogy and, of course, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And th that, that'll become a quadrilogy. Oh, the, the Raiders. Uh, that's not thing. a real word. That word was invented by the, the, aliens. the, the, the people marketing the aliens box set. Well, they did it beautifully. Quadrilogy. It makes yeah. no sense. Uh, and also Hugo Weaving, mm. who was the pointy eared elf man in the Lord of the Rings trilogy and also in the Matrix trilogy. He was Agent Smith in the Matrix yes. trilogy. Uh, and that Danny Dyer, he's desperate for a trilogy. Come on, someone out there. No, know anyone who's got a spare one. You've got a spare one. One of those trilogy. Chinese blokes goes around the pubs. Yeah. We have a briefcase full of trilogies. Maybe a dirty trilogy. Dyer, he's desperate. <laughs> a filthy trilogy. Famished. 
D- D- Danny wouldn't mind, you know what I mean? We don't want him to have to do the football, what is it called? The real football, football factory. factory. Have you seen that on Sky One? No, uh, the series. The real football yeah. factory, where right. he goes off, he, wa- he goes to football matches all around the world, watches it kicking off. Yeah. Has a ciggy and goes, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, oh, he presents that, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he does, yeah, yeah. Does he have a ciggy? There's an old sig and, uh, On I think, screen. I think he does. <laughs> I might be imagining that. Excuse me, viewers. I'm gonna have a sig. I'm gonna have a little siggy and watch the, uh, match, <laughs> watch the fight kicking off. And, uh, oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Nasty. Ooh, oh, tasty. Got a knife. Ooh, tasty. That bloke was tasty. Look at that. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to have another sig. Oh, that's appalling that. That the bloke's tasty. Yeah, that's what they say. Is it? Tasty means they like to punch each other. Ah. Yes. Now I think it's time for... Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Right, we're not sure how this subject's going to go down, but we're going to try it anyway. Text the nation is, of course, the part of the show where you uh, text things into us and we read them out. Uh, in response to a question. It's a new, it's a new kind of new feature. idea. Yeah, it's a new idea that we've thought of and we're gonna make a lot of money. Yeah, if this catches on, other shows might do it. Yeah. Um, but remember, you heard it here first. <laughs> uh, the idea this week, uh, starts with pet names or nicknames for young children. Uh, so pet names in the literal sense and the non-literal sense. It doesn't have to be young children as well. It happens with your partner or your loved, loved one. ones. Yeah, cute things. Yeah. Uh, and the idea is you give a pet, I'm gonna stick to pets, cause this is how it happens in, in, in my life, mm-hmm. you know. I do have people I love in my life, but mainly the cat. <laughs> <laughs> it was called Macy, uh, she, I didn't name her, she belonged to a neighbour and then she just kind of moved in with us. Mm. And the neighbour's since moved away. She's a very nice cat, she's called Macy. Um, but of course you give a cat a name or a pet a name, and very quickly you get bored of that name and you start kind of rejigging it, remixing it, reversioning it. Sure. So Macy became Maceface. Right. Yeah. Maceface. And then after a while we got bored of that, so Maceface became Macy Facey. Uh-huh. It was only a couple of minutes later. Macy Facey became Measles. Yeah. Measles became Measly Weasley. Measly Weasley became Ron Measley. Nice. Out of Harry Potter. Very good. Ron Measley became Feasibles. Uh-huh. Feasibles became Furry Sticks. Furry sticks. You made a little <laughs> jump there. I did make a jump. So forget furry sticks. But what we're after is uh, kind of pet names that you then evolve, like Chinese whispers mm. or maybe um, declining a Latin verb. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. There has to be some kind of logical through line, though, because you do, at certain points, you just make a little logic jump, don't you? Yeah, you and start even- with Macy, end up with Ron Measley. Right. Or, uh, well, I like furry sticks. Yeah, well, that's in reference to the cat's legs. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's genius. I think all cats should be called furry sticks. We also call her Wooly Face. Uh-huh. And that, uh, turns into when she's haranguing us for food, Wooly Bully. Mm-hmm. Oh, Wooly Bully. Uh, and sometimes verbal features. There you go. You know, and, uh, you do, you do this with your children and, and with your uh, partner sometimes. You don't do it with your parents so much, do you? You don't call, you don't have kind of no. names for your dad and no, stuff. No, not unless you're really pathetic. You know, exactly. <laughs> we would discourage that. Parents are authority figures. That's right. Yeah, you don't give them uh, demeaning pet names. No, and you wouldn't do that to the Prime Minister, for example. That would be simply awful. It would be disrespectful, and it would undermine his authority. But what's your point? I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, my point is that uh, I think... Um, if people are texting us or emailing us, mm. then I'm interested to hear their pet names for their children and, and uh, husbands yes. and wives and partners as but well. But the deal is the the way they evolve. Yeah, we want to hear we the evolution. We want to know where you start. You started somewhere sensible, and then gradually, as you got bored of calling it that name, the name evolved. So we want those little lists lists of names. Like my my son, uh, my youngest son is called Natty. Uh, so we call it. I would immediately go for Natty Dread. Right. And then I'd probably go for Judge Dread. Would you? Yeah. And then I'd be off on a whole 2000 AD. Never jack. went there. We never really? went there. That, that avenue lies ahead of us. Instead, we went, uh, Nat, and then Nut, and then Nutty, mm. and Go Nutty, and then Go Nuts, and then. That's f- very dangerously close to an anatomical <laughs> word. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he doesn't know that. Though. And then Go Tard. Sometimes. Go-tard. If it's insulting. It's a little bit insulting <laughs> if he's behaving like an idiot. Uh, and then go nust and what does where does go nust come from? It's kind of go nuts with the letters mixed swapped around. around. Yeah, yeah, but where does it come from? 
Oh, go nuts, it blows from the east. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know what. So you get the kind yeah. of thing, listeners. Uh, please te- text us on 64046 or email adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. You can uh, communicate via either of those methods. We read the emails instantly. Uh, you know what? You can, that there's any you can delay. communicate with either of those methods with anyone you want as well. It's not just us. Really? Yeah. I'm not sure that's true. No, maybe not. Um, so there we go. That's Text the Nation this week. Get them coming in. Uh, now, what's, what is it now? It's time for the news read by a man, I think. <laughs> this is a recording of um, something that happened to me last night. Which one were you there? The the, the, the one, the first one. It's my girlfriend. Is that you saying get in the car, though? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Get in yeah. the car! Get in the car! Yeah, it's just an incident with the milkman yesterday morning. Why'd you put that accent on there? It's how I talk is off that... air. This is a persona. Oh. But yeah. <laughs> when you get back to Stockwell, that's how you yep. talk. Everyone talks like that in Stockwell. <laughs> that's right. It's near Brixton. It's the most violent and deadly place in the country. Now, folks, uh, I'm sorry to tell you this, but uh, Joe and I are... Go, are going to be fired yeah we've we've had a mess in the studio we've had an accident in the studio a spillage uh, of information uh, all over the floor and it's information concerning rem we've been horribly misinformed um about this whole rem business they're not playing at the ica Mm-mm. they're playing at the royal albert hall and they've got some kind of exhibition at the ica what's more the y- gig the gig is in honor of the ica right uh, what's more, you can no longer get tickets. No, the lines have been closed, so it looks like it's curtains for this show. You know, it, it a lot... It's peop- a phone vote scandal. People have been fired for a lot less a lot than less for, from the big British All we castle. can say is it wasn't our fault. That's what they all say. Yeah. That doesn't wash at the <laughs> big British castle. <laughs> we're off, then. We're, they're gonna, we're gonna be tarred and feathered and... Alan Carr's back next week. Pushed off the ramparts. For the foreseeable future. <laughs> it's been lovely being on air. Thanks We'll very see much. you on the Big L. For all your, where's the big L? It's some radio station with old DJs on it by the seaside. Oh, good one. Very good old DJ. Free candy floss. Exactly, yeah. Wicked. If we're lucky, we'll get on the big L. <laughs> uh, so yeah, sorry about that. Uh, if you tried to get on the website there for the REM tickets and, uh, uh can Whose we- Whose fault was that? Can we uh, put some was blame it really? on someone? Was it Charlotte? Charlotte, c- come in here, please. Come in here, Charlotte. Charlotte, just come in here. What are we going to do? We're, we're just going to make Esther to apologise. We're going to do some humiliating. Can't do that come on, Charlotte. Come this on over here. here. This is Charlotte. This is the kind of thing. Would you like to apologise? Yes, I'm very, very sorry. Say, dear listeners. Dear listeners. I'm very sorry. I am very no, sorry. No, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. <laughs> for do what I do. <laughs> for do what I do. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. There we are. She didn't say the second bye there. She but didn't. still. You're fired. You're fired. Thank you very much. Clear your desk. Clear your desk, pack your bags, get your coat, and get out. So, yeah, sorry about that, uh, REM fans. Uh, two of them out what, there, what, what did we offer them as a, as a, a sop, a fob, or whatever you want to call it? Nothing. You can listen to the gig on the, um, Stuart McConey and uh, Mark Lard show. <laughs> 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 what is Lard's first name? <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Eric. Listen, let's have some music. Uh, this is a free play from you, isn't it, Adam? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm a big Robin Hitchcock fan, and this is from his album I, which was re-released recently. And if you're a Van Morrison fan, uh, which I think a lot of our listeners will be, then maybe you're familiar with the album Veed and Fleece. That's one of my favourite Van Morrison albums. It's a sort of just after Astral Weeks, and it's an absolute, uh, absolute mess. That's how you pronounce the uh, the phrase absolute smash. Absolute smash. Um, and this song, Raining Twilight Coast by Robin Hitchcock, is sort of indebted to a track uh, from that Van Morrison album called uh, Streets of Arklow, I think it's called. But this is Raining Twilight Coast by Robin Hitchcock. Enjoy! That was uh, The Slits with Typical Girls. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. It's time now... Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. It's Text the Nation time. This is the part of the show, listen carefully, because this is complicated, where we give you a subject and you text us about it and we read them out. So what was the middle part? Uh, I'd forgotten. Ah. Uh. I wish I should have made a note there. Anyway, the subject this week is evolving nicknames Mm. for pets or children or loved ones. You give them uh, a a kind of a nickname. You get bored with it quickly. You start to evolve that nickname. 
until it becomes kind of like a weird game of Chinese whispers and ends up something that nobody could possibly deduce where it came from. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So, I've only done the emails so far. They, we've had a lot in. I'll, I'll try and go through the, um, the text when we get a longer record. But here are some emails. This is from Emily Poston. She says, My little sister, Cicely, became Cicely Parsley early in her life after a Beatrix Potter book, Cicely Parsley's Nursery Rhymes. Is that how you pronounce Cicely? C-I-C-E-L-Y. Cicely. Cicely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, quite suitable for the blonde moppet she was. Happily for all concerned, I think, this has, in the intervening years, morphed into cis pass, parson, arson parson, and often fondly into parsehole. <laughs> A move to the mellower West Country led to my attempt to impose pass I pass irie on her? I think I'm pronouncing some of these wrongly. This continues to sit uncomfortably with her all-consuming antipathy for all things mellow. I love her. Oh, that's nice. Oh, isn't that nice? That's a wonderful journey. That's good. Parcel, though. <laughs> <laughs> this is one from Ryan Staines. I've got a friend called Laura. Once when pronouncing her name in a funny way, I noticed it sounded like Lou Roll. Uh -huh. uh, that turned into Bog Roll, since that was funnier to shout in the street. Someone changed that to Bog It, which was meant to be nicer. Somehow that devolved again into Bogganoggers. <laughs> she is now a barrister and has been known to call herself Ginger Ninja Lawmaster Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Bogganoggers is good. Bogganoggers. <laughs> a trained barrister. <laughs> Would Bogganoggers please come to the stand? <laughs> I have many names for my cat, says Alison Shaw, who is named Lemmy. He is named after Lemmy Kilmeister's mole. Uh, he's uh, L K Lemmy Kilmeister from Motorhead. Okay. This can also be Lem, Lem Lem, or the Lemster. Anyway, when I got him, he was kind of lackluster, according to my vet, so I started to call him Scruggy. Scruggy Scruggs, which then became the Scrugglet. That mutated to Scrabbly, or Scrabbles when feeling formal. Scrabulous junks. When he's bad, I say, no way, Jose, as in, no way, Jose, <laughs> but pronounced wrong. What? Uh, I no just give no way, up, Jose? Up, I, I don't know. know. Anyway. There you go. So that went from Scruggy Scruggs, Scruggler, Scrabbly, Scrabbles, Scrabulous Junks. Scrabulous Junks is good. I like That's where they good, end up it? these names often, you know? Yeah. Uh, Gareth Owen says, hello, my name is Gareth. At the age of eight, I unfortunately acquired the nickname Garfield, which was regrettably shortened to Garf and stayed that way for some years. I went to college, tried to lose it, but it still lingered like a foul smell. My brother modified the name to Garfy, which I quite like. We've got a habit of putting the in front of people's names, so it became the Garfy, yeah. which I like even more. It eventually changed into the Garf C, which when typed into a text message comes out the hard she. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Which the very same brother decided to use as El Hard She Libre. And now a lot of the time he just says libre. <laughs> You see, that's exactly the kind of thing we're looking that for. That is an insane journey. Finally, Andrew Morris. Hello, A and J. Over the course of our eight-year relationship, my ex named be thus: Andrew, Drew, Drewbington, <laughs> Drewy, Drewby, Drewby Madraws, Drewby Draws. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't go so far, really, does it? Keep these coming in. We're looking for, you know, the most bizarre and weird evolution of a nickname for a pet or a friend or a, or, or a loved one. Uh, here's another one from Jennifer Rachel Burks. I went to a sixth form college in the early 90s with someone called Jonathan Thorpe, who went by the nickname Temps. That came from the following uh, logic strand. Thorpe equals Thorpey. Sounds like 4P. Add 6 is 10P. <laughs> becomes Temps. Add 6 is 10P. Well, I put that bit in, because oh, it right. just goes Thorpe, Thorpey, 4P, 10P, Temps. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you, you remember our it? friend uh, Chris Cook? He yeah. had quite a tortured, uh... Evolution of nick nicknames. Yeah, it yeah. started off Chris Cook and then, uh, Dr. Hook, he was yep. called. And then after that, it was, uh, just the Doctor for a while. And then H Hookles, and then Dr. Spock. <laughs> and then Spockles, and then Spockta. Spockta's a good one. Uh, and then, oh yeah, and then, and then variations on, there was a little fork that went in mm. the Doctor Road, you know? Yeah. So it went, he turned into, uh, Doc Ock for a while. Ah. Like Dr. Octopus. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, Doc Ock and Spock and... I've got a few. Went on. Joe, Joe Bo. Yeah. Uh, c the Cornmeister. I have to have a think about those. Cornballs. You must have a few as well. 
No, I never had any. We talked about this before, but I, I was always very jealous of people who had nicknames. I've, I've got nothing except obscene variations on Buxton. Keep your uh, nickname evolutionary strings coming in. The email is adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. The text is 64046. Uh, here's Johnny Flynn with his leftovers. Come on. Come on, Johnny. There you go. Delicious, uh, freshly squeezed orange juice for the, for, for you there, listeners there. That's Rip It Up, of course. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's Saturday morning. We're in the last hour of the show now. Uh, who's coming up at noon? Is it Liz? Is it Liz? Well, you know, we don't... We, we, we well, don't know. We're not going to say anything yeah, factual anything. anymore. No, because we know almost n- idiots. next to nothing. What do we know about? But listen, as Adam mentioned earlier in the show, I'm unfortunately indisposed next weekend, so Adam's got a guest uh, presenter sitting in. But before we get to that, uh, we're doing Song Wars every other week at the moment, listeners. And to be perfectly honest, I'm a little bit jealous that um, uh, someone else, the, the mystery uh, guest presenter... Mm. He's going to get to do a song wars. Yeah. I like doing song wars. And yeah. I've really got into the habit. I, I was uh, a bit grumpy about it when we first started and complained about the workload. But I got into the habit and I can't stop um, doing songs. Mm. So the I, song's just got to come out. It's just got to come out. Uh, I've got it's, music it's in fun. you. It's fun. And, uh, you know, sometimes they're not very good, like the following... But this week, I just couldn't stop myself from doing a song, and I knew I wasn't allowed to write a song. Uh, I thought it might make you upset. Um, so I've written a song that isn't really a song. Mm. It's, it's called This Is Not A Song, This Is It. This is not a song, it does not exist. This is not a song, if you think you hear a song. You are wrong, cause this is not a song And it's out of tune, it does not make sense It's out of sequence, it suddenly stops Then it goes stronger, it could not be wronger Because this is not a song, it doesn't have words This is not a song, if you can hear words You are wrong, cause this is not a song I have not done a song You cannot sing along There is no chorus No middle eight The words do not rhyme Most of the time This is not a song Yeah, well it's like the Beatles, isn't it? Is this? It's very similar to a lot of the Beatles. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Experimental music, like something that maybe he would have turned up on, um, uh, the Yellow Submarine, mm. uh, album there. It reminds me mm. of, uh, it's only a northern song. Mm. Uh, it's very deconstructionist. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of ideas going on there. Did you buy a new set of uh, plugins for Garage Band there? I bought something called a Chaosolator. A Chaosolator? Have you heard of the no, Chaosolator? Pop Chaosolator into YouTube. K. A O S C I, you know, oscillator on like the end. Chaos pad. Or yeah, something. that'll um, that'll teach you. Is all that, that a bit of hardware? It's 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 basically uh, what was the Rolf Harris thing called? The stylophone. Stylophone. Yeah. It's a stylophone for the noughties. Brillo pads. Yeah. Chaosolator. Chaosolator. Well, it's brilliant. Also very frustrating. Yeah. You'll see why if you have a look at the films of people using them on YouTube. Uh huh. Uh, well, yeah. that was uh, that was um, that was extraordinarily strange. Thanks for sharing That's that. Sorry, right. it was only short, and uh, we're not asking people to vote for that. No, just ignore that. Pretend it didn't happen. It was just a little burst, a little uh, creative ejaculation there from Joe Cornish, yeah, all over the ears. <laughs> all right. Uh, now, uh, my presenter next week, my <gasps> guest co-presenter, will be the film director and pop <gasps> video genius Garth Jennings. Oh. He's an old friend of both of uh, both mm. of us, me and Joe. We met him ages ago. He'll do a ruddy good job. Yeah, I'm sure he will. And uh, he's got a film coming out. That's not the reason that he is co-presenting, incidentally. It's, it's a convenient coincidence. It's a convenient coincidence. He's got a film called Son of Rambo coming out. Talk about convenient coincidences. They, they made the film over a year ago, uh, but it was sort of held up as far as getting it released went. So now it's turned out that it's being released about a month after Rambo. So that's quite good, isn't it? It's got nothing to do with Rambo, other than the fact that it's about some uh, young boys in the 80s making it's a quite a lot of... to do with Rambo. Yeah, thematically a little bit, but that's where the similarity it's ends. It's about a kid 
who doesn't have a telly, who's from a puritanical religious background, yeah. who sees Rambo in the 80s That's on, right. on home video, and it changes his life, and he goes about making a kind of uh, kiddie version of Rambo. Yeah. It's great. It's, it's hit hitting cinemas soon. It's more of a rites of passage thing, though, than a kind of recreation of Rambo. It's a must-see. Yeah, absolutely. I've got, like, a little uh, minor hey. scene in there. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about something else. No, no, no. What? I see you. What a little disease or mole. Oh. I've got a little, uh, winky. Uh, no, I pop up in Son of Rambo very briefly. But anyway, Garth is going to be co-presenting next week. Of course, as well as being a film director, he also directed uh, amazing pop videos like Pumping on Your Stereo, the one with the Muppets for Supergrass, Coffee and TV with the little milk carton for Blur, and many others. You can ask him about that next week, listeners, if you like. And Garth is going to be taking part in Song Wars. And the, the Song Wars challenge for next week, which Garth and I have to fulfil, is we've got to uh, create songs using members of our family. Uh, can be any family member. Uh, we've just got to make a song with them in it. It can't be us singing. So that's Song Wars for next week, and you'll hear what we came up with then. Uh, but uh, for the time being, that's it for Information Zone. Uh, here's Elbow with Grounds for Divorce. That's Elbow with Grounds for Divorce. Right now it's time for... Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Yes, Text the Nation this week is all about evolving nicknames, where you give someone a name or a nickname, and then over the weeks and months it evolves into something completely different that uh, a novice could never possibly trace back to the origin. Uh, we've had lots of very nice uh, uh, emails and texts. Nice is the wrong word, isn't it? No, nice is a good Amusing. word. Amusing. I like the word nice. Uh, we used to have a teacher at school who uh, banned the word nice. Teachers. She hated it. Yeah. And everyone, as an end-of-term present, used to bring her nice biscuits, you know? Yeah. Used to say nice on them and laugh at in her. In your face. You should yeah. have shoved those biscuits right in her face. <laughs> That's what you should have done. No, I'm joking. Uh, you should never shove biscuits in people's faces. It's very dangerous. But uh, I think everyone Do has... Do it slowly and softly. That's fun. That's sexy. If you just press it on the end of the nose very softly and then wait till it just crumbles Hey, listen, the if you moisten the biscuits first with warm water, that's a whole different thing. If you dunk them and then push them in someone's face, <laughs> that's, a, that's a sign of love. But everyone has teachers who do that, don't they? Like English teachers, they're always saying, don't use the word nice. I ban that word. If I see that in an essay, you get a minus mark thing, you know, immediately. And I've never had a problem with the word nice. I like it. It's nice. Okay, here are some of those emails. This is from uh, Dave in Cheltenham. Morning, chaps. Our eldest son is named Joshua, which was obviously shortened to Josh. This quickly became Josh Mosh, then Mishmash, then Mishington, Mishington, Mashington, until finally arriving at Mission Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Not so bad when he was five or six, but now, aged 17, he finds it a little embarrassing. Such is life. <laughs> <laughs> is that what he's put says at the end? dave yes that's brilliant from uh josh to mission impossible that's very good that's a good one here's one from <laughs> uh, uh eh, skipping that one here's one from uh a collins andrew collins i'm not sure my little sister's called georgina this was swiftly turned into georgie and george but strangely moved in the tyrannical direction of genghis that hmm. was too brilliant to let go of so we stuck with it genghis that's quite an odd one, isn't it? Good. Genghis is nice. So, uh, this is from John Bateman. Hi, we inherited a cat when we bought our house, imaginatively named Thomas, which obviously wasn't interesting enough. He became Tom, Tomo, Thompson, and whatever Tom derivatives came to mind, including including Tomkin. And that naturally led to Battleship for Tomkin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he understands the role he played in <laughs> Russian history, but he answers to it. But then he answers to anything. I think he might be a bit deaf. <laughs> John Bateman and Judith Winters in Scarborough. Thank you very much for that. That's excellent. Battleship Potomkin. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Russ Jones. Dear Adam and Joe, my mother had a cross between a chihuahua and a Chinese crested powder puff. Does that exist? It's a cartoon character. It was originally named Webster after Webster Booth, who died on the day that she bought him. Webster naturally turned into Webby and then became Webby Woo Woo. This somehow evolved into Webby Woozle. 
in reference to the Winnie the Pooh story where Pooh and Piglet walk around and round a tree in search for two woozles and one weasel. Webby Woozle became just Woozle and then turned into Woo Woo Woozle. Finally, any combination of Webbies, Woo Woos and Woozles was accepted. The dog died of a brain tumour. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why I was reading that one out and then I realised. <laughs> Not because of the nicknames, though. Possibly, I think. It's very confusing mm. for a dog. Uh, Leon Trigg has sent Dear Adam and Joe. Oh, no, sorry. This is from Amy in Brighton. The email address says Leon Triggs. She's uh, piggybacking on someone else's Wi-Fi, That's probably. illegal, I think. Dear Adam and Joe, we have a lovely, fluffy, cool customer of a cat called Sydney, and then Denny, oh, off the back of Sydney, I suppose. Sydney became Denny, becomes Den, becomes Denzel, became Denzel Washington, <laughs> becomes Denzel Washing Cat. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a denny day we can sing the blondie song denny denny i'm so in love with you ooh, ooh. that's Den pretty good denny denny i think you'll find denny denny then says I'll <laughs> denzel washing cat that's very good uh harold dalton says my girlfriend is called helen which soon became helly which became smelly which became stinky which became ugly she <laughs> loves it all right ugly all right <laughs> elise richardson our dog is called ruby when he was hungry, we used to, sorry, when she was hungry, we used to say that she was hungry pungry. We then started calling her pungry. Now she's called pungs. That's weird. That doesn't go far enough, does it? For you, you look disappointed. Well, yeah, we're sort of half, that's a journey that's only halfway complete. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a, yeah, I'd it's like them to life. get back to me in a year. John Vowles, uh, says my daughter Alice has a great pet name. Here's how it happened. Alice became Ali. Ali became Ali Bongo. Ali Bongo became Alfonso. Alfonso has become Fonzie. Oi, Fonzie! That's good. You'd never track that back to Alice, would you? Never. Wouldn't happen. The tracks are perfectly well covered. Tom Bacon says, I had a friend at school called Adam. His real name was Sam, but he didn't like that name. That's a different story. <laughs> when we found this out, we used to call him Spam, which then evolved to Spoon. He was also called Baboon alongside this, <laughs> as he looked a little bit like a baboon. We then merged these two names, and he became known as Baboon. <laughs> <laughs> Says Tom Bacon. There well, we I'm go. jealous. I, I sympathise. What's well, Baboon? You could... Oh, no, hang on. Was Baboon from Adam? Yeah, you could take Baboon. I never had any That's nicknames. That's Baboon. That's no good. I'll There's tell you what, let's, let's wrap up Text the Nation There's shortly. A There's a lot more that we can do. But first, here's a bit more music for you listeners. Now, you chose this one, didn't you, Joe? What is this? It's Erica Badu. Yeah, this is the new Erica Badu album. She's a terrific uh, singer. If you don't know any Erica Badu and want to know uh, how to get into her, then if you haven't seen Dave Chappelle's film Block Party, rent that out and watch it on a really good uh, hi-fi and a big screen. And Erica Badu does an amazing couple of uh, songs in there. And she's got a new album out. It's a very important, difficult, mysterious album. Uh, it's called something like New America Part One, but America's spelt all funny. Because it's a sort of concept right album. Now. It certainly is. The cover has her face, a painting of her face, and she's got a big afro, but it's not an afro made of hair. It's made of all kinds of symbolic little symbols. Symbolic junk. Yeah, you know, you, it's one of those album sleeves you can get lost in. Yeah. Find lots of messages concept in. Concept album's coming back in, I think. This is her, her new single. Uh, it's great, and it's got a fantastic squidgy synth on it that uh, reminds me of my childhood, and is sort of the sound of um, going through very thick mud in, in wellies. Ooh. Yeah, uh, this is Erica Badu with Honey. There we go, Erica Badu with Honey. And weirdly, that's the hidden track on the album. Oh, that's often the case. Sometimes it's... Is it that's happened before, has it? Well, you get like a really good hidden track, you know what I mean? There's nothing worse than a really bad hidden track. That's the that's her first single off of it, and it's the hidden track. Right. So it was... I was a bit, um, you know, disturbed when I that's got it home. Strange. I was looking for that song, and I, I thought, man, the single's not on the album. The name of the single isn't on the back of the album. Well, sometimes what happens is the band does a stopgap single, do you know what I mean? But some that between albums to keep up interest to keep up interest but it's not really in keeping with the spirit of the album that eventually gets released so mm. they they mm. either miss it out completely or they have it as a as a mm. uh, little hidden track there it's a good album that i do recommend it if you like that kind of thing if you don't like that kind but of what thing, happens if you don't like it? well i wouldn't buy it oh i think you'll be uh misinvesting your money right that's city news here on the Adam and Joe radio <laughs> That's show. Very important news. Uh, now, before the real news, here are uh, the Lunatic Fringe, also known as CSS, with Off the Hook. Yeah, they're Off the Hook. That's CSS. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Time now for the news at 11.30, read by Nikki Cardwell and Andre Payne. Mm. 
Brit Award winner Kate Nash with Merry Happy. That's the fifth single to be taken from her debut album, oh. Made of Bricks. Surely, I mean, with the best will and the, and the, and the best skills in the world, she's never going to be able to equal the success of, uh, Made of Bricks. Do you, don't you reckon? The first album. <laughs> <laughs> uh mm, it's it's bad to be negative about music that you play on your show usually we take care to um to for one of us to be enthusiastic about a record um can't manage it oh one. come on i loved that I, that was my Did favorite you? song there we go listen we might do for song wars um in the week after the week after next we might go for kate nash kate nash songs. songs i've always wanted to do a kate nash song see if we can out nash each other i think it'd be hard to do the accent though i might have to do a sort of parallel universe kate i don't nash. know i think it would be easy that's quite Cause good. Because I got spots on my bum and I'm feeling real sleazy. Oh, you're already one step I've ahead there. I've had a there. cup of tea. My best friend's called Colin. You got to talk about how rubbish your boyfriend is as well. He is rubbish. I wish he'd go away. That's good. Thanks. You could get a chart on for that. It. You could get a chart on. <laughs> 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 so yeah okay then uh so next week on song wars me and garth are battling it out for songs with relatives in them and thereafter two weeks thence it'll be Hither. song wars um with kate me and joe doing kate nash songs brilliant all stuff to look forward to there now let's uh wrap up text the nation jingle jingle my jangles Text the nation. Text, 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 text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. We're talking about evolving nicknames, um, nicknames that sort of start sensible, then you get bored with them, so you t twist and change them until they become a, a word whose logic you can't possibly trace back to any kind of sense or origin. A mangled distant cousin. Thank you very much. This is from Lindsay in Glasgow. My friend Stiff got his name thus. His name was Graham McClure, which changed into McGlue, then into glue stick, from st and then from stick into stiff. That's good. Yeah? That's How do you go from stick to stiff? That's easy. Sticky? Stiffy? Fair enough. Thank stick. you. Thanks, thanks. Stiff You've stuff. The question. Stoofles. This is from Matt. <laughs> My mate at school became Knickers from Anthony. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, not sure how, but it went to Antonoid, then to Noid, then to Droid. Nice. That's quite good. Oi, Droid! He also has my cat cobweb, is now known as Collie Wobbles. <laughs> <laughs> Our cat, says, says, uh, Stee in Wirral, is called Milo, which is transformed into Milwa, Putty Milwa, Putty Monsieur, Monsieur Stench, Cat Head, Cat Face, Cat Face Killer. <laughs> <laughs> cat Face Killer is Yeah, good. well, cats are hideous murderers. They're awful. Whenever you think they're all sweet, they'll mm. go and disembowel a baby hen or something they are cold toss them around oh. spiritually that is yeah um my kitten's called lynn uh this one's anonymous i think and gets called lineker <laughs> which is how she is sometimes known as gary nice yeah that's fairly straightforward uh is that it yeah two steps yeah <laughs> Well, it's only a text. <laughs> My cat Eric evolved to Rick Rock. I guess you go from Eric to Rick. Yeah. From Rick to Rick Rock, uh, based on the name of the guy who sang It Wasn't Me with Shaggy. Now it's become Truck Stop. That's good. Eric, Rick, Rick Rock, Truck Stop to Harry Trucker. Nice. Yeah. The next step is going to be obscene, isn't it? From that. Yes. My sister started with Nina, mm -hmm. then became Neens. Then Nina Nuna, then Nooney, Nooney Noon, Goon, Goose, Loose Goose, Goon Face, I now call her Marvin O'Gravel Balloon Face. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, who's that from? Uh, oh, I thought maybe there. Nina Nana would be in there somewhere. Nina Nana, yeah. She's the, uh, is strong. she still the entertainment correspondent for uh, London Tonight? Which Probably. is a uh, excellent uh, news program <laughs> if you live in the London area. Just looked at the, looked at the text, and we've had quite a little flurry of text complaining there about the uh, the playing of the Kate Nash. Oh come on, come on! She's only what is she like thirteen? She's four. She's four. fourteen. Um, dear Adam and Joe, this is from Ali. I was at university with a boy called Mark Manson Barr, who was so insanely posh 
that the only possible thing to call him was Mark Manson Barr. <laughs> when his brother came <laughs> Wait, up- Wait, Mark Manson Barr? Yeah. That is an amazing name. Mark Manson Barr. When his brother came up once to celebrate his birthday, we simply called him Thong. <laughs> this was 12 years ago. Uh, He's probably yeah, a lawyer now as well. Pretty good. My sister, uh, is the Wigwam Why? It is the Wigwam. Mm -hmm. Why? Here's why. Her name is Fran. Obviously after that was Flan. Then Fat Flan. Then Cheese Flan. Then Cheese Flan the Cheesy Wigwam. Finally abbreviated to the simple form Wigwam. That's from Rowan. Very good. Pretty good. Wiggles would have been nice after that as well. Could have popped a Wiggles in there. Yeah. Timothy Parry says, My brother Simon has seen his name mutate in the following fashion over the last 20 years. Simon, Pyman. Mm -hmm. Very common Fair step. Fair enough. From Pyman to Pie. From Pie to Pig. From Pig to Gip. That's Pig backwards. From Gip to Skip. From Skip to Moses Skip Tan Tanu. What? After Kenyan distance runner Moses Kip Tanui. Kip Tanui. Is that how you say it? I don't know. Uh, to Moses to Mo. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? That's very nice. I also call my cat Delia Monkey Face, due to her similarity to a rhesus macaw, but recently found out that Monkey Face... Oh, I'm not reading that. Ahem. <laughs> uh -huh. You check these before you read... No, I don't. I don't have time. There's so many of them. Ooh. Okay, you're allowed two more, and then we have two to wrap more. up... Two more. All right, all right. Text the um, this week. Oh, gosh. You've still got more music to play. My name more. is Sarah, which became Saz, which became Suze, which inexplicably became Squidoots, Suze Squidoodle, which was shortened to Squid, which is what my mum still calls me today. But when I answer to Squid in mixed company, people give me funny looks. Mmm. It's yeah? always strange when parents do keep working the nickname in public. Like, your parents don't have an insane nickname for you, do they? My dad calls me Bobo. Does he? And he sometimes calls it to me, uh, calls me that quite loudly in the street. In the street. Hello, Bobo. Bobo. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love him and I love it. Uh, he can I do no wrong. I never knew you were called Bobo he by could, your He dad. can hit me across the head with a cricket bat and I'd still give him a hug. Yeah, exactly. Especially if he called you Bobo just after yeah. he hit you. <laughs> Bobo. <laughs> there you go. Plus it's Bob Hoskins, isn't it? Exactly. Bobo. Ooga Bobo. Only the best. Do you want one more? Last one. I can't uh, tell you whether this is any good or not. I haven't right, really then. read it. This is from Helen. An old friend of mine called Rachel decided when we were about 13 that she wanted to be known as Pick from now on. We found this a difficult transition, so to ease ourselves in, we came up with a string of nicknames. To begin with, Pick became Pickles or Captain Pickles. Following the Pickle Good strand, she became Picker Lily. This inevitably became Piccadilly Circus. There was even a song for her, Pick, 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 Pickles, Lay a little egg for me, but I'm not sure where that one came from. It came from the post-war variety hall, <laughs> didn't it? <laughs> So uh, she uh, she could never have foreseen that. Why did she want to be called Pick in the first place? To know. That's Pick, bizarre. Know. Being called Helen, I've been called Nelly, Smelly Nelly, Nelly the Elephant, Melon, Lemon, and when I was in school, one of my best friends latched onto Hell. Yeah. <laughs> I've been to hell and back. Thanks very much for all your texts and emails this week. We really appreciate all of them. And sorry if we didn't read yours out. Uh, you know, we don't want to get into a big fight about it, okay? But uh, we'll be back, of course, next week with more of the same sort of stuff. From the nation's favourite feature, Text the Nation. Feels like we should have an outro jingle. Yeah, you did well there. Yeah. We've never really sort of closed it or wrapped it up in i was wrapping that it up way that yeah. felt really good i put a little bow Finally on it there closure. For you. yeah now here's the strokes with when it started that's brilliant there that's one of my favorite songs by the strokes i think that is a b-side of a uh, maybe the last night single it's just a smash i wouldn't mind some more strokes please they must be working on something new another slice of strokes they're too busy being very rich and swanning around in new york and sexy and sexy have sleeping. they got rid of all their celebrity girlfriends i think they might have done you know i think they may have done it's a wise move it's always a better wise to be move. normal get safer rid of, get rid of decadene surely hey listen earlier we were talking about the what we believe to be currently the worst film poster on display in uh, in in the great british isles which is for a film called the accidental husband mm. got a dreadful example of uh, low resolution photoshoppery on colin firth's face yeah very low res uh, and a number of people have emailed in pointing out other photoshop style inconsistencies in film posters and this we're thinking this could kind of run as a sort of minor strand because it's often very frustrating when you see a film poster and uh, you know, the body is clearly a, a, a different person than the head. The other thing they do sometimes is 
is to flip the image round uh, from left to right. You know, what I mean? to do it to, to mirror the image. Yes. Uh, if someone is facing the wrong way and they want them to just face from left to right rather than the other way around, they just flip it round. But when you do that to a picture, mm. it often looks very weird. Something odd happens. If like if you just uh, flip round a, a picture of someone you know or whatever, mm. they look wrong. If you m mirror that image, it's strange. well, especially if they're wearing something that has a word on it exactly or something then it's completely backwards but someone sent in an email saying this is from mike wheatley he says i'm glad it's not just me i saw that poster on london bridge the other day i'm a retoucher by trade so i notice rubbish photoshop work as a matter of course i can understand why they won't be able to shoot the three of those actors together but it looks like firth had his shot done by the local free paper photographer they've spent the retouching budget on her face to make her look like a stepford wife Sh he's way too magenta mm. Mm. Uh, next on my film poster hit list is the new film get smart have a look at his left foot you see it from full on underneath. There's no way on earth he can have it in that position. Get smart. Who stars in Get Smart? Uh, it's Mr. Mr. Man, Dan in real life, um, Mr. Oh, Steve Evan. Carroll. Yeah, Steve Carroll. Carroll. Oh, he's yeah. going on a little downward, uh, spiral there, isn't the he? The trailer's got a couple of funny moments. So Is the it? jury's out on Get Smart. But, um, I'm gonna, uh, keep, keep an eye out for that poster. Mm. If anyone else spots some, you know, some dodgy photoshoppery on film posters, do let us know. Impossible foot. Yeah. Uh, now, here's uh, my final choice for you this week, listeners. This is by Suicide. They're from New York, and they're kind of a crazy art punk band. And uh, this, if you remember, if you uh, listened to us last year, we did songs based, uh, for Song Wars, songs based on the instructions from uh, Ikea Meatballs. And my song, Meatballs! Uh, was more or less based on, on this track by Girl. It's sexy, it's minimal, it's suicide. Oh, stop it, you're touching my cakes. Don't, don't touch my cakes. Girl, oh, don't touch my cakes. That's what he's like, the guy. You see. Martin Rev, is he called? My professor is glazed with honey. No. You have <laughs> touched it with your fingers. <laughs> now there's stickiness on your fingers from my <laughs> profiterole. <laughs> Lick the stickiness from your fingers. I can't finish my sausages. <laughs> my profiterole has become stuck to this doily. Would you like my sausage? Peel the doily from the profiterole. He's not German. I don't know why I'm doing that voice. But that's what it sounds like. He sounds like a filthy German man. That's on that disgusting. Song. That was Girl by Suicide. This is Adam and Joe here on Six Music. It's pretty much it for the show this week, folks. Yeah, we must remind you that you are uh, able to listen to this entire show live on the BBC Six Music website, or you can go to iTunes or the Six Music website, or, I don't know, other sites what do podcasts and download the edited version uh, as of 6pm tomorrow. It only stays up there for a week, don't forget. You've got to be quick. Yeah, people have uh, emailed us to, uh, to ask us why the, uh, you know, the iTunes thing doesn't have a back catalogue of... Um, of uh, podcasts just don't that's something to do with the great british castles licensing laws the whole big uh, contract between the taxpaying public and the uh, big the british BBC. contract yeah no one understands it uh the thing you have to do is subscribe if you just press the subscribe button on itunes they'll pop into your inbox then you can keep them at home then you can upload them to BitTorrent, which would be wrong no but there's sure to be some nutter out there collecting them and it, you may have read uh if in certain trade publications this week that we're uh, we're um, plans are underfoot for a new hour-long sort of podcast stroke album thing we haven't quite Brazil. decided on it we're still feeling a little anxious about the idea of uh charging for it we don't want to thing the problem is that you know you put all the work into it you need to get a little you need to get paid for the time and everything but then you don't want to rip off the the, the public what you know about. it's just i'm, I'm rambling i'm voicing concerns <laughs> in my brain anyway we'll, we'll, we'll let you know when that all finally materializes that's the end of the show though thank you very much for listening thank you to everybody who's texted and emailed um i'll be back with you the week after next next week a very special guest dj yeah, Goth Jennings is going to be with me next week. Liz Kershaw is coming up, but right now, here's Ting Ting's. Take care, have a good week. Bye, love bye. you, bye. <laughs>